Hey everybody, welcome to another iOS development tutorial. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a class called UI Motion Effect. Uh, this is a new class that's available to us uh, within iOS 7, and uh, you may know it as something called a parallax effect. Now, if you've never seen a parallax effect, um, if you've got iOS 7, and you happen to tilt your phone back and forth, left to right or up or down, you'll notice that the background appears to shift kind of in 3D space. Uh, it's not real 3D, of course, so it's very simulated 3D, um, which is known as a parallax effect because it's using layers of some kind uh, to really simulate that. Now, uh, Apple has introduced a class called the UI Motion Effect. It's an abstract class, and this is what allows us to create that effect. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, but there are a couple prerequisites. One, of course, is that uh, you have to be running at least iOS 7. Two, uh, you probably want to be attempting to follow this tutorial on at least uh, Xcode 5.0. You can see the version I've got up on screen. Uh, and three, you have to be able to run this sample app on hardware. So at the end of this particular tutorial, we will certainly have... Um, an application that is complete uh, in terms of displaying this parallax effect but in order for you to be able to actually see it you need to be able to run it on hardware uh, you cannot run it on the simulator simply because the effect requires uh, the use of accelerometer data uh, which means uh, you can't run it on the simulator because it just doesn't have access to an accelerometer. Uh, so anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. Uh, we're going to start by just picking a single view application. This is going to be a very, very simple app, really no functionality except for uh, us illustrating how you can create that UI motion or parallax effect. And I'm going to hit next. I'm just going to call this project UI motion effect YouTube. Uh, I'm going to set the device family to be iPhone and we'll just hit next and I'll create this on my desktop. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, while Xcode is indexing the files, uh, let's also take a look at this general tab. You'll see that the deployment target is set to 7.0, which is required. Uh, the device we're going to set to iPhone. Uh, that's just easiest for now. The device orientations, you'll notice there's a couple boxes checked. I'm going to uncheck everything except portrait mode. Um, so that is the only orientation I'm going to support. You can, of course, support the other orientations, but for uh, the purpose of just uh, keeping this tutorial simple, we're going to leave it on portrait. Um, so with that done, we can actually get started. One more thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just jump to my preferences here, make sure that I've got the right presentation style set, and I do. Uh, so we've got that there. And then I'm going to jump into our main storyboard file. So you'll see pretty simple. Uh, here, we want to go over to the objects library and just find an image view. So we'll find that and then we'll just drag and drop that onto our view here. Very good. And then we are going to then want to create an outlet to this particular image view. So I'll just call up the assistant editor and jump over to the header file and just right click and drag a connection over here. And we'll call this particular outlet my image view. Okay, and this is sort of force of habit. You don't really have to do this, but I like to always synthesize um, my outlets. Uh, that makes it easier for me to ref refer to them later. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Whoop, might help I guess if I named it correctly. So it's my image view. I believe that's correct. Yeah, okay, so we're good. With that done, uh, let's jump back over to our storyboard file. Right, so what we need next is, of course, a couple images uh, that we can use to, uh, to display this particular effect. Now, what I've got is I've uh, taken one of the pictures uh, that I've got on my machine, and I will uh, open this up real quick here so you can see it. And I've got a couple images uh, that I've created uh, that are just standard PNG files. Um, one is, of course, for the iPhone 5 um, or the 4-inch screen, and then, of course, two for uh, the older iPhones. And we're going to need these images so that we can use them within our application. And the way I'm going to include them is normally I could, of course, select these and just drag and drop them in here, but I'm going to use the asset catalog um, 
that comes standard with all iPhone applications now, or I'm sorry, all iOS templates. So I'm going to use this, and I'm actually going to do a, a quick little tutorial on this. So if you've never used this before, don't worry, just follow along. Or if you don't want to use the asset catalog, just drag your files in here uh, like you normally would, and there's no problem. So I'm going to say new image set, um, and I'm going to call this. Just uh, rename this here real quick. I'm just going to call this background and we'll say this is not universal but rather device specific. And we will drag in the actually went with it in here. I can say retina four inch as well and drop that in there. All right, so with that done, I'm going to just drag in my images and There we go. So we've imported our images. Again, if you've never used the asset catalog, do not worry about this. Just drag your images in like you normally would because you're going to see in a second, all I'm going to do is jump back into my storyboard and I'm going to essentially set this UI image views image property to this value of background. Now, why did I use the asset catalog? Well, the asset catalog is something new uh, that's available within Xcode 5. And what it allows us to do is essentially manage all the image resources that we are using within our application without having to worry about the naming conventions that are needed. So if you've been building iPhone applications um, for the I, uh, iPhone or iPad, then you know that uh, each of those images has to have a very specific name. So you've got to have at 2x, for example, if you want it to be the retina display. Now, with the asset catalog you don't actually have to worry about any of that and again like I said I will create a quick short tutorial or quick how to uh, that just outlines uh, why you want to use the asset catalog but if you have never used it before you can easily just drop it into your folder like you normally would and then just set the property to whatever that image is um, so no worries there all right with that done there one of the things I do want to point out and I will share these images with you uh, along with the source code for this particular tutorial uh, is to note that these images are actually designed to be a little bit bigger in size than uh, our normal um, iPad display so with our standard iPad uh, I'm sorry with our standard iPhone uh, which is the iPhone 5 at this point uh, it's a little bit longer and so what I've done is I've designed the images to be a little bit wider than its normal size. Now here of course we're looking at it in iPhone 4 mode and you can see this is the 3.5 inch display and what I've done is normally this would be 320 by 480 but I've made my actual background image to be a little bit bigger in my graphics program and you'll see why. Uh, the reason we make it a little bit bigger is because with our uh, parallax effect, we're going to the user is going to be tilting left and right and up and down. And if you don't have some amount of bleeding off the edges, you're not you're going to get sort of a white space area um, if the image isn't big enough. And we'll see again why in a second. So I'm going to jump switch this back to just be the standard iPhone 5, and then I'm going to select this here, and I'm going to adjust the size of this particular image views frame. So the way we'll do that is we'll select this image view, I'll go over to the size inspector, and then I'm going to change these values here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create sort of an offset of sorts, and I'm going to set this to let's say negative 25, or maybe we'll make that a little bit bigger, we'll say negative 35, negative 35, and then we will want to change these values so the image is wide enough and tall enough to accommodate that. So let's change this to let's say 360 and we'll change this to let's say 600. Okay, so these are just values I've made up and I might even have to go a little bit taller because as you can see, it's not quite reaching that. So let's just change this to 620 and there we go, we've now got our image. So these are values you want to of course play around with. Uh, I'm just setting the origin to be a little bit outside so that it gives it enough room uh, in terms of the frame to be able to uh, make that parallax effect. Okay, with that done, we're going to jump into our view controllers implementation file. And we are going to create a couple different things in our view to load method. All right. So let's start by creating min and max values. All right. So these values are what we will use with our UI motion effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a CG float 
and I'm going to call it left right min. And I'm going to set this to, let's start off by setting this to um, negative 55.0 and CG float left right max to just 55.0. Now these are values that you're going to want to play with. So the higher these values, the more pronounced the effect is when the user tilts their device left or right. Um, so we'll just do uh, this particular parallax effect along one axis, and that is again something that you will want to make a note of. The parallax effect has to be done based on each axis. So if you want it to be along the x-axis or the y-axis, you actually have to create two separate effects group them together and then apply them to whatever view object that you've got. So what we'll do here is we'll do the left right first and what we're going to do is apply this motion effect by making use of a particular um, class that we can instantiate that is actually part of the UI motion effect class. Now this class is called UI interpolation motion effect and I'm just gonna call it left right we'll do a standard UI interpolation motion effect alloc and an init of course with that done we're going to set its let's see here actually we want to change that init method so let's change that init method to init with key path and it's going to ask us, okay, well, what's the what's this going to be? So we'll say this is left right. So we're going to do it along along the x axis. So we'll say center dot x, and then we're going to set the type to be UI interpolation motion effect tilt along horizontal axis. So that's that x axis for us. And then we can then come down here, uh, getting an error, and that's because I attempted to end the statement without that. Okay, and then now we can say left right dot minimum relative value, and this takes an ID, and so we'll just say it's left right min, and then we're going to say left right dot maximum relative value, or we're going to set that to left right max. All right, so with that done, what we can do is our, our next step is to create a motion effect group. And we're going to say UI motion effect group. I'm just going to call this me, ME group, motion effect group. And here we're just going to do a UI motion effect group. We're going to do an alloc and an init. So pretty standard stuff here. And then we are going to say me group dot motion effects, which is takes an array, and we're just going to set that to be whatever we want. At this point, we really just have left right, so we're going to add that. And then, last but not least, we need to add the motion effect group to our image view. And the way we would do that is we would simply say my image view and we're going to say add motion effect and we will pass it uh, me group. And there we go. That is all it takes to be able to do the motion effect. Um, now, one of the things that I'd like you to do is stop, go run this on your hardware and you'll see what I mean by uh, the left right axis now creating that parallax effect. Now you would want to play of course with these values because like I said, these are the min and max values and uh, the higher these numbers are, the more pronounced the effect. Now just to add to this, what if we wanted to also create some kind of an effect along the y-axis, which means if the user tilts up or down, we also want to create this motion. Uh, in that case, we can do the exact same thing we've done so far. So what we can do real quick, 
So let's just copy this. Instead of left, right, min, we'll call this up, down, min. So it's a upwards and downwards motion. Again, up, down, max. And we can leave these values at this, or maybe we can change it to 35, 35, so no problem there. And then we have to create this exact same motion effect. So I'm gonna copy this. We'll come down and we're gonna say, instead of left, right, we'll call this instance up, down, uh, init. We have to change the init with keypad from center.x to center.y. Remember, we're going up and down. And we also have to change this type to be UI interpolating motion effect type tilt along vertical axis. There we go. And then we'll come down here and we're gonna say up down dot minimum relative value is now going to be at, we're going to change this to up down min and similarly, we're going to do an up down. You get the idea. Up down dot max relative value is the same as before. We're just now going to change this to up down max. All right. With that done, um, we're good there. And then we've created our motion effect group. We just now need to add our new up down effect to this list. So we're just going to say comma up down. And there we are. And this time, when you build and run your application, you are going to find that the up-down motion also allows for that parallax effect. Now, I can build and run this application, like I said. It's going to do nothing, simply because uh, we have no way of simulating this effect um, on the simulator itself. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this is, in essence, how you implement that parallax effect. At this point, there's only one instant, one sort of subclass that you can really instantiate, which is the UI interpolating motion effect. Um, so that's really all you have. The other thing to sort of keep in mind when you're building this is, uh, remember, anytime you access hardware like the accelerometer, you are not going to be using some of the device's battery. So you want to use this particular effect sparingly because you don't want to have your app eat up all of the user's battery and then you know they essentially delete it from their system uh, because it's some kind of a drain. Um, thanks for watching and we will ca I'll catch you in a, another tutorial.